everyone. Just for some background information, I said I would read one chapter of my erotic fan fiction that I wrote two years ago about Solevin. Um, for every $20 people donate on stream. Unfortunately, I was kink shamed by the Twitch <laughs> staff who said it's really good, but you can't read it on Twitch. Because but I too, would like too link. hot to handle. It's too hot to handle for Twitch. <laughs> but I was donated to, and I keep a promise. And as a bonus, I will be reading it to Stacy, to my best friend Stacy, <laughs> my erotic fan fiction of Solus and Lavellan from Dragon Age Inquisition. Hashtag female Lavellan, hashtag Dorian, hashtag so dumb. <laughs> what? Rating mature. <laughs> archive warning. Creator chose not to use archive warnings. I should have. <laughs> Category FM. Fandoms Dragon Age Inquisition, Dragon Age video games, relationships Inquisitor Solus, female Lavellan Solus, character Solus, female Lavellan Dorian Pavis, female Inquisitor Dragon Age Fen Harrell. Additional tags time travel, romance. So dumb. <laughs> Language English? Part one of the Young Wolf series. Oh boy. Published 2014, December 26th. Published, quote unquote. Yeah, published. The Young Wolf, Sashimi. Lavellan accidentally uses the amulet from Redcliffe to travel to a time when she and Solus could be together. <laughs> oh god. Chapter one. Already. The Young Wolf. Are you ready? Um, I don't know. Are you, is it more embarrassing knowing that I wrote this? <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really excited. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of grammar and spelling errors, so. Stand by them. Okay. Inquisitor Lavellan was now one of the most powerful women in Thetis. There was not a single faction that did not owe her and the Inquisition for their very existence. Ambassadors and suitors filled her hall daily with requests of aid, <laughs> alliance, or marriage. In truth, she enjoyed this respect and re reverence as she sat on her throne, but not in a sense of dominance, but in the idea that she was a tale of elf mage who had risen so high in the Shemlin's world. She was not going to waste this. She was going to use this to build a new place for her people. It would be a place where they didn't have to be afraid or secretive or constantly lose their sense of selves to time. They could live in peace with the Shemlin and other races and not make the same mistakes in the past. In her mind, she imagined her people coming to her safe haven from all across Thetis. Not just the Dalish, but also escaped slaves from Tevinter, oppressed city elves, and even, and maybe even some who had chosen the Kune. This was her dream that had held almost every hope. It was as far <laughs> off as a, and hard to reach goal, but to her, it was a life, it was a lifetime of work and sacrifice. Okay. It was worth the lifetime of, okay. It was worth a lifetime of work and sacrifice. Just one thing still saddened her heart as she sat in her power. <laughs> in her god power? <laughs> with, with suitors filling her hall? The man who had lit the spark of her dream and had left, and never said if or when he would return. He showed her massive and ancient elven kingdoms in her <laughs> dreams. Flawed ones, but still grand and proud. They made her realize her people could be so much more, even more than those memories. He promised it would all... It would, all be made clear after she had fell, defeated Corypheus, but that wouldn't that she would know why he broke her heart after making her face bare. What? Remember, he takes her her face. Oh, off? making her face bare. Yeah. I was like, Whoa. "What does that mean? What's yeah. that kind of what kind of sex is that?" Yeah. <laughs> after making her face bare, <laughs> the broken promises felt like betrayal when it crossed her mind. Sadness and rage built inside her until she pushed the memory aside. That's enough for today, she commanded, and a small sea of people parted for her as she crossed her hall and strode towards the library, past his old study, and with his paintings all about her. <laughs> it felt like he learned everything about her, and she learned so little of him. Oh, when does this take place? Is this before? Before Trespasser. Okay. After the end of, end of the main game, but before any of the DLC. Got it, okay. This is important. Just... I'm going to have to bring up some reference lore stories before we go on to the next chapter, so you know understand what's going on. That's good. You have you have extended reading homework for this yes. fan fiction. Lore extensions. I can't wait. He taught her much. 
just not of him. He taught her of how to control the fade, to use her mark in order to, to use her, her mark, to use her, her mark in order to shape it to her will and to control other people's dreams. He showed her ancient events lost in oceans of time, but she learned so little about him. Of course, she did know him. She knew his kiss. Oh God, this is good. Oh no! And the way his hands wrapped around her. I gotta be. I gotta. I just get gotta it. get through this. Just go it. It gets worse than this. <laughs> She knew that no matter his reluctance, he would inevitably find his way back inevitable. into her. Inevitable. He would inevitable <laughs> find his way back into her arms and bed with little more effort than a look or a touch. A nibble on the tip of his ear or a breath on his neck could make him drop his tomes and throw her to the floor. Whoa. When he was especially stubborn, she would touch herself and bring her fingers to his lips. It would not be to not be soon after that. He called her body a temple, and his mouth labored between her thighs. Oh, Stacy, it's gonna get way worse than this. Can you handle it? She nibbles the tip of. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 Let's yeah. Do it. It's gonna get. <laughs> really. It's gonna get serious. Yeah. Are you ready? You you wanted this. I know. I'm so ready. You want it? Okay. Okay. Thinking of something naughty, Dorian drawled from his chair. Looking as elegant as ever, Lavellan had not realized that she had been standing on the second floor absently staring into nothing, and quickly composed herself. No, just a long day. I'm tired. Are you thinking of anything naughty? She quipped back. Oh, just filling my time with time. Wow. <laughs> he said as he swung that damned green amulet that caused her so much trouble at Redcliffe. If she could never think of the horror that thing caused again, it would be too soon. Annoyed and frustrated, she quickly blurted, Don't mess with that, and snatched the horrible thing by the chain with her right hand. She looked down at it with revulsion. Remember, the mark is on her left hand. This is important to remember for the story and to understand what's going on. Okay. Everybody, remember, you have to do your lore research before listening to this. To this. I'll have a recommended reading. Recommended reading is before the smut. Before the smut, so you can understand why the boners are doing that. <laughs> Dorian quickly stop it, stood up in protest. I spent years researching it. I can't just let that go to waste. But Lavellan was already walking away. As she looked at it, she felt a sudden yearning. She just wished, if anything, she had more time. So Solas. <laughs> she had more time, Solas. <laughs> Supposed to be with Solas. Yeah. I, I just want to go back to... I just want to go back to a time when he and I could be together. And at that moment, she thought that. She placed the amulet in her left palm, and the mark exploded in light. The next moment, she was gone, and the amulet fell to the floor. I'm going to be blamed for this, said Dorian. Next. Oh, what are the comments? <laughs> oh, boy. I love this idea. Yeah. Start off with a little literal god complex. Go up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me repining. Yeah. <laughs> Being like, this is where it's gonna go. Whew! All right. Now, All right. All right. Oh, so we needed some background before we... Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. Hold on. Let me look up the the legend. And drool. <laughs> Oops. Uh... La 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 la, slow arrow, noble, fen hero in the tree. You Wait. could use control F to just search. Oh yeah, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello, the tree. Oh yeah. In the story, fen hero was captured by the hunting goddess Andrew. He had angered her by hunting the hollow without her blessing, and she tried tied him to a tree and declared that he would have to serve her in bed for a year and a day to pay her back. Of course. But as she made camp that night, a, the dark god Anaris found them, and Anaris swore that he would kill Fenharel for his for crimes against the Forgotten Ones. And Druel and Anaris decided that they would duel for the right to claim Fenharel because that's sexy, of yeah. course. He called out to Anaris during the fight and told him of a flaw in Andruel's armor, just above the hip. And Anaris stabbed Andruel in the side, and she fell. 
Then Fenhurl told Anaris that he owed the Dreadwolf for the victory and ought to get his freedom. Anaris was so affronted by Fenhurl's audacity that he turned and shouted insults at the prisoner, and so he did not see Andruel, injured but alive, rise behind him and attack with her great bow. Anaris fell with a golden arrow in his back, badly injured. While both gods slumbered to heal their wounds, Fenhurl chewed through his ropes and escaped. So, with that in mind, with that in mind, we move on because there is extended reading for this erotic fan fiction. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Lavellan is in a strange place and has no idea what is going on, but she finds solace and rescues him. But things are more confusing than she thought. Wow. The, <laughs> what? But things are more confusing than that she thought. That, that she thought. <laughs> Green light's so bright it burns. It feels like flames are all around her. She pulled and pushed through a current that through a current the wrong way. She felt this because... She's felt this before when she was pushed forward through time at Redcliffe, but this seems so much longer. There was There is no air to breathe, and her lungs are desperate to expand. Right when she feels like she's going to pass out, the tense of Mari's writing changed. She <laughs> slams onto the ground and grasps for sweet, crisp air. Before Lavellan La started... Before Lavellan started cursing in panic, she, had her, she heard loud and angry voices nearby quick thinker that she was, she, <laughs> she yet again changed the tense of her writing. She does her best to, qu to quiet her gasps and desperate coughs. You can't lose it here. Just get through the situation, then you'll be able to create a plan of action. Figure out where you are, who those people are, and get moving. You have no staff to center your powers, but a knife in your boot, and your mark to do something with, she thought to herself. Oh, is her she talking... a, she's a mage. Yeah, okay. she's a mage. Of course, like, you can, only a mage can control that boner mm -hmm. that hot erection okay she thought to herself prep talking herself into the moving yeah i should have said she's a mage i think no i think they they did mention she, you the you did mention it earlier oh Just yeah wanted to make sure yeah. you, under, you understood mm -hmm. what was going on i'm with you she You're got nibbling and all <laughs> She got onto all fours, staying low to the ground, and took into in her surroundings. She was in a dense forest. It's dark, but there was some light nearby where the voices were continuing to scream and argue. It sounds like it sounded like Elvish, and yet again, Mari changed her tense. <laughs> like tense changes all over. <laughs> but it's going by so fast that they are using and they are using so many words she isn't sure. Crawling slowly, she approached a clearing where the light was coming. from where the light was coming from. Some sort of magic was illuminating the area and there were three people, elves. One was a woman wearing golden armor while another man seemed to be fighting her in combat. The third man was tied to a tree near the edge of the clearing. Mm. He calls out to them, damn it, what is wrong with me? He calls out to them and the fighting man stabs at a weakness in the woman's armor. Wait, she knew that voice. It was Solus's voice. She didn't know what he'd said, but he must be trying to get out of whatever situation he's in. Is this why he never came back or sent word? Was he pushed into the future? How far? How long had it, has it been in this time? Questions for later, she thought. Now I have to help him. She moved her way ar around the clearing silently, silently and positioned herself behind Solus's tree. By this time, Solus had, some, had something else to... to to had the some something had else. some something else to the strange I think had said. said something else to the strange man and he seemed to be extremely angry about it she looked she took her knife out of her boot and waited she didn't know what she would do with a small knife against that unusually large elf <laughs> But she needed to feel like she had something. Luckily, the golden armored, golden armored woman used her last bit of strength to stab him in the back, and they both fell asleep. Because, <laughs> like, imagine how weird that would be. Like, they're fighting, and then they're like, nap. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's, like, exactly the way I took it when we read the lore, <laughs> but we'll go with that. Nope, they took a nap. <laughs> they just, I didn't take it as, like, she stabs him, and they literally just, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like both like narcolepsy and just fall asleep. Well, for the sake of writing time, I was like, and then they went to sleep. <laughs> she crawled up next to Solus as she watched the sleeping duo and asked, Did they both really just fall asleep, Solus? He turned his head quickly to her and looked in complete shock. 
She laughed and continued, didn't expect to see me, did you? And turned her attention to his bindings. They were not ropes, but thick, woody vines. It seemed like a type of magic. Well done as well. <laughs> she was impressed, but she also needed to figure out how to get him out of there before the two weirdos were, woke up. It's They're all weird. Like, to the weirdos. The, well, she like, doesn't know what's like going. Dragon Age lore, blah blah blah. They're weirdos. I'm, I was trying to write it from the perspective of like her being like, "What?" Like not knowing where she is. So like, gods act really weird. But it's like, can you imagine if in like Song of Ice and Fire, he's yeah. like, "Yeah, they're weirdos." <laughs> Yeah, they're weirdos. <laughs> Give me a break. It's fan fiction. I'm not George R. R. Martin here. I know, I'm just, just giving you a hard time. If I had my staff, maybe I could burn them away, but too thick for my knife. Maybe if I just focus on my knife and make it really hot, I can burn through them like... Yes! Lavellan exclaimed as she pushed her weight down on the knife through the vines. She looked at Solas and whispered, Arlasa, my love, Ravas, with a smile. He just looked at her without a word, and she noticed that he looked different, really different. She was so excited and nervous she didn't realize. His hair was shaved on the sides, but on top it was long, dark, and wild. Yay! Dreadlocks? It was so dark she couldn't tell, and he seemed to be wearing an animal skull on his forehead. Just how far in the future was she thrown? Let me just give you guys some reference. Yeah, we need a picture for this. Okay. Ten. Because it's really... Concept art. Here we go. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Here, look that. See all this yep. shit? Uh, oh, yeah. Believe me. I've seen the concept art. <laughs> yeah, look at <laughs> this. Look, it's basically, he looks like, they were like, no, let's make him a nerd. But I was like, why didn't you do this? Yeah. He's got a skull on his see, forehead. See all those, like, awesome drawings that people have done? But I guess he would have been too sexy if, yeah. Too sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone would have... Oh, oh, this is other people's... Um, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Slugget.tumblr.com. Uh, Katie, Katie is... Uh, Katie is a lady. Dot deviantart.com. Sorry, that was an accident. I didn't mean to. Sorry. But anyway, now you guys know. This is, this is concept art of him covered in tattoos. <sighs> Past, present. You know, there would have <laughs> been no chance... Yeah, nobody. No chance for this pussy. Yeah, if he looks like that. <laughs> like we could, we were like, look at this nerd. Oh. Oh. He's... What? Why is he so smooth? What's going on? Back to the fan fiction. Okay, <laughs> you're excited, aren't you? I am excited. Okay. Anyway, that's what he looks like. Yep. Let's go, she said, and grabbed his wrist with her left hand. Remember, her left hand has the mark on it. So in this story, it like has a power over him that he can't resist and he's like why the fuck can't i resist this bitch oh yeah left hand pulling him into the forest running seemed like a good idea to get away from the ones who had captured her solace <laughs> she her, ran oh her wow. her solace she ran until she could barely breathe and finally finally slowed down into a much smaller clearing still holding on to solace with her left hand she waved her right at some branches to force them to pile together. Another flick and veil fire lit up and slowly turned red to create heat and light. She finally turned around to look at him to see his face, looking vaguely curious, eyebrows slightly raised. His eyes darted from the fire to her, back to the fire. I'm more competent than you give me credit for. I've been practicing what you taught me. She snipped. Solus's only response was a widening grin that showed all of his teeth as he gazed down at her. Like a wolf. Like a wolf. She had never seen that grin before, but she slightly enjoyed it. She looked at him, she looked him over. He was wearing furs and leathers with his long dreadlocks falling over his, over one shoulder. It was different and weird and she loved it. She loved how <laughs> it was different and weird. <laughs> it was. She loved how he always seemed to be so unusual no matter where he was. <laughs> Grabbing his furs, Lavellan pulled his head down to her and she kissed him deeply, invading his mouth. Wow. She, she pulled back slightly and took his lower lip into her mouth and swirled her tongue around it, then was rewarded with a low, rumbling hum that she could feel in his chest. Encouraged, she lightly caressed the tips of his ears the way he showed her he liked. <laughs> he responded with a louder rumble as he placed his hand daring, daringly on her ass. Then she took a step back and pulled out of Solus's embrace to tease him. 
He almost fell over, gained his balance, and looked at her in a way she had never seen before. It was almost a sneer, and that set off all the rage and hurt she had forgotten about in her passions. Where did you go, Solas? Why did you leave me without saying anything? Without saying goodbye, she screamed. Solas, why? Again, Solas slowly looked at her, then slowly started to smile, that big, toothy smile. It wasn't pleasant to look at this time. It just hurt. Oh boy, we're starting to get the... The angst? Yeah. Solas started to move towards her, towards he, <laughs> and tried to grab her, but in her rage and pain, she pushed him away. Her hands sparked, and he fell back harder than she wanted him to. Guilt, anger, and sadness welled in her, and she turned away. Irabella, Slavon stuttered as she tried to get hide that she was crying. Oh, did you want to translate these? Oh, it'll get trans... So... She's saying things, and he doesn't understand her, so this will be translated in the next one, but she's saying, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay what she was said, that other one that she says to him when she cuts the bindings? Oh, something... He'll, you'll be able to understand in the next chapter. I can't oh. remember what oh. I wrote. Okay. <laughs> what did she say? Oh, okay, no. la, 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 la. I think she's like something my love. It's it's down... Uh, the, there. Our love some other of us. Oh, you're the center of my heart or something like that. Or something like that. Oh, no, I set you free, my, I set, I think it's something I set you free, my love, or something like that. I can't remember. I can't remember what I said. <laughs> we can look it up, but I don't want to. No, that's okay. That's I okay. put it together with a bunch of words that I knew, and it was like something like, I set you free, or something like that. I was just curious. Yeah, don't worry, because he'll be able to understand what he says in Elvish in the next chapter. So it's the same thing, but from his perspective. Got it. All right. <sighs> Lavellan gained her composure and turned back to face him. Solus was still looking at her, but now with his eyebrows slightly furrowed, a long stream of elvish fell from his mouth that she couldn't understand. Most of the words were ones she never learned and he never taught her. In frustration and exhaustion, she, ex she exhaled, let's just go to sleep, and lay down on some soft moss. Annoyed that he insisted on speaking in Elvish to her at this moment, of all times. He always tried to get her to learn more by doing that, but this was ridiculous. <laughs> you jerk! You jerk! <laughs> you broke up with me and went to the past! <laughs> she knew going to sleep would not be the end of it. If anything, maybe she could just have some time to process things in the fade. Lavella knew souls would come to her there, and she was still angry. I should punish him. I should make him beg and plead, and I'll him deny him that. She laid on, on her side and saw Solas laying down a few, free from, few feet from her. He was looking at her, but not smiling, just looking. She closed her eyes and fell into the fade to wait for him. Onward we go! Ooh, it's gonna get saucy! Okay. <laughs> Bound to a tree with two idiots fighting over a catch. This, mm -hmm. Hold on, the same, so the same meeting through the eyes of Fen Harrell. Oh, this is so A dramatic reading. Oh, okay, you just gotta do it. I'm like sweating, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's you, didn't need to, you didn't need to, you didn't I need can, to check. can confirm, is sweating. Because <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. All right, I'm gonna do my Fen Harrell voice. I, got, I gotta take this seriously, okay. Bound to a tree with two idiots fighting over a catch, hmm? I can't blame them. I am quite the prize. Making love to the lovely Andrula doesn't seem so bad, but a year and a day is quite a chunk of time. Anar seems to be quite upset that I betrayed his siblings, however. I think he might kill me. Death seems like it may, it may be a worse fate than indentured lovemaking. What to do? The dread, wolf, the dread wolf spoke. Anar, there is a sliver of silky skin just waiting to be penetrated by you above her left hip. I rather think you would enjoy such intimacy. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Anaris quickly gazed on Andrul's hip and also noticed the flaw in her armor. Quickly, he struck, and Andrul fell to the ground in agony. Anaris straightened and turned to Fen Harrell. I suppose you prefer death. I suppose you prefer death than to enjoy her bed. A strange preference, but I will not complain. Today, I get my revenge. Anar said as he strode towards his prize. The Dreadwolf grinned and said, Oh, but I think not. You owe me your victory, so your victory's prize should be mine. And me being the prize, I am mine, and proceeded to grin and cackle. 
Anaris roared. You dare try your tricks on me? You are bound. You won't be fleeing this time. I will kill you a hundred times over, and each time worse than the last. You will pay for your sins against me. As Anaris raged on, Andrula managed to shoot an arrow into his back, silencing him as he fell to the ground. Both beings having spent their power, they fell into a slumber to recover. Then Harel smiled at himself with victory. Idiots, the both of them. Now to figure a way out of these back... Surf the surf the blah blah pride. <laughs> Said a little bare faced woman to his left. It was so unexpected and bizarre that for once he didn't have a clever reaction, internally or exter- externally. Shut up! Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> what is this little morsel saying, and why is she smiling like at me like she's my equal? Ah, she has a knife. Little good that'll do her. Maybe she thinks her idiotic attempts to help me will gain her faith. Ah! It exclaimed. <laughs> oh, she cut them loose. That was clever. The little barefaced woman then looked at him and said, "He and said what he thought it could be. I set you free. Ah, oh, that's what I said. I set you free. But it was pronounced so horribly, he thought he may <laughs> be mistaken. Because she's, like, really bad at it. <laughs> she's from the future where everything sucks yeah i set you free but it was pronounced so horribly he thought he might be mistaken she was staring at him unashamed looking at him with no fear or embarrassment usually when the lesser people saw him they looked down or away for after a few seconds why was she just looking at him like that i love it the lesser people she's barefaced but i can feel the scars of a slave radiating radiating off her face a freed slave. Maybe she's just the rebellious kind, faking confidence in order to defy the way of things. I think I like this little thing. Even if she grabbed his wrist and pulled him up and was now pulling him through the forest. For a moment he tried to resist and was surprised to see that he simply couldn't. He couldn't even try. He found this rather curious and amusing. The little imp was turning out to be quite a riddle. He loved riddles. Oh, he's such a dick. I know, right? I love how you just, like, really went in and, like, were like, yeah, he's a dick. Well, yeah, because, you know, because you know how people mature over time? Well, but also, I know how angry you were at him after that game. No, 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 because I wrote this before Trespasser. Yeah, I know. So I didn't know that he was, I I was like, no, he's still good. (laughs) Oh, oh. Yeah, so I just thought, oh, well, if you're going to be worshipped as a god, you... This is before he realizes that slavery is bad, and then well, she but, makes him think that slavery but is But you bad. remember after Dragon Age Inquisition, you were friggin' pissed at him. I was, but I was also still turned on by him. Yeah, this, and you can really see it <laughs> in how this is written. Or, I mean, I can see it because I was there. Well, you'll see how much I punish him, so <laughs> let me just take a sip of water. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> All right. Looking, uh, they stopped in a clearing. They stopped in a clearing, and he watched as she performed magic, and even summoned Veilfire with little effort. He was impressed. Then proceeded to be intrigued as she began speaking to him in her strange tongue, looking right into his eyes with no fear at all. He quite enjoyed that little bit of insolence and made a wolfish grin. Then she grabbed him and forced her mouth on his, and he savored this insolence even more. This little tart can't be a maiden, I am sure. <laughs> Let me just make sure this is still recording, because I don't want to lose this yeah, magic. This is, this is good. She bit his lip, and he felt the sensation shoot dra- straight down, and he growled in pleasure. She was pushing him to the edge and daring to have no fear about it. He is going to take her, and she would be in awe. She should be in awe. Oh, she, he was going to take her. <laughs> Even better. He was going to take her. She should be in awe. <laughs> but then she stepped back, and he almost fell out, fell into where he should... Bleh. But then she stepped back, and he almost fell into where she once was. Wounded pride is not a good look for the dread wolf. Something in his face set her off, and she started to scream in her <laughs> indecipherable <laughs> language. I hate you! She looked the way she looked when she, she, he liked the way she looked when she was angry, even if it made no sense as to what was happening. His wolfish grin reappeared. Maybe if I get my mouth on her, she'll be silent. Hmm. After that, however, I would like to hear more of her rambling as I, as I take her, a sudden flash of green and a slam to the chest threw him on his back. 
Her habit of interrupting my internal dialogue is rather annoying. <laughs> what? What was that? That was familiar. Was it in her hand? Ah, her left hand. The hand that held me. What a little mystery you are, little Hala. Don't you know, little Hala, like you should be afraid of big wolves like me. Ooh. Because wolves, right? Yeah, because wolves. Mm -hmm. But I guess when the little Hala has a big leash, she can tempt the big wolf all she wants. <laughs> hmm? No matter. Once you sleep, you will be in my realm. And in my realm, I always catch my feasts. <laughs> you know, I think, like... It's it's cringy because we're like reading it together, but I don't think it's I think it's pretty good. If you were reading this by yourself, you I would, would yeah. You'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean it's like when we when we read uh Cute Demon Crashers together and you're like sitting there and you're like, Whoa, this is like I'm so into this, like but then you you're would start reading it and I'd be like, Oh god No, I don't wanna hear you say it <laughs> Her response was a surprise. Thank you, Stacy. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, I'm very happy that I mean, things are about to get really. Aside from the fact that you call everybody weirdos, which is well, you know, because I'm trying to get past this. I'm trying to get to where I want. I want to, You're you like, know, uh, exposition. Exposition weirdos. to sex. Because <laughs> you know, you gotta have um, the build up. Because yeah. if it goes straight to sex, you're like, uh, uh. yeah. There's no. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get the like. Mm. Because I was like, how do I make it so she fucks him when he was a god? Hmm. <laughs> but there's, like, a whole storyline to this. Like, okay, so she makes him fall in love with her. And Wait, they... wait, are you giving away the story right Well, because I never finished it. Oh, okay, but let's finish it oh, first okay. and then you can... And then I tell you the rest? Yeah. All right. Her response was a surprise, a sigh of words he didn't understand, and then laying down on the ground to fall asleep. She looked right into his eyes, and he could see that she had anger. She had anger in them, like sh he should be, the, like he should be the one afraid of her. Then she closed those big, pretty eyes and fell straight to sleep. I like this little Hala. I think I might keep her for a pet. But as Fenhrel <laughs> fell into the fade, he had a brief thought that she may be more like a coarser hound than a Hala. Little lore exposition. Yeah. Courser hounds are well known for being able to chase off and control the dread wolf. Ah. That's why he said courser hound. Thank you. The more you know. <laughs> You're welcome. Extended reading for this erotic fan fiction. <laughs> chapter four. Hunger. Chapter four, chapter four. Chapter four. Chapter four, chapter four, chapter four. <laughs> the dread wolf stalks the beyond. King of his realm, master of nothing, it turns out. <laughs> I hate you, Solus. Oh, this is, this, is where, this is where I'm going to start sweating, so I need, a, I need a few sips of water. Hold on. Okay. It's going to get, it's going to be, if you read this by yourself, you would be happy, but I'm reading it to you, so you're not going to be happy. Oh, Okay. That's how bad it's going to be. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Are you guys ready? Are you all ready? I'm so... Look how... Is my face really red? No, I think you're okay. You're just pink. <laughs> but you're always like... You're either pink or pale. Yeah, that's who I am. I'm like a... Like a dainty... That 1800s woman. Well, no, because it's not just your cheeks. It's like your whole face oh. is pink. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have that Asian thing where you don't brush. You know how some, if you're Asian, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I have the Asian thing where blushing is so intense that, like, it gets all over your whole it face. It spreads onto your whole face. Yeah, but I don't have this. I'm half Japanese, so I don't have the the d slightly darker skin. So now I have really pale people's skin, so I just turn completely red. Yeah. So... <laughs> I get, like, really blotchy on just my cheeks. That's not true. I saw you blush last week, and I was like, how come she oh, blushes no. so prettily? Not God a, damn it. Not a blush, like, when I work out. Oh, because when Stacy blushes, it's, like, only on her cheeks, and I'm like, you lucky bitch. Ah. I know. <laughs> I <was> like... <laughs> anyway. All right, moving on. My realm. My realm. I'll keep you updated on the, on the sweat situation. <laughs> Stop. I'm touching her forehead right now. <laughs> Just you might so have you guys to put on know. some deodorant after this. <laughs> Wait, do I stink? No, no, no. Oh, okay. My realm, my rules. I'm going for you. I'm coming for you, little Hala. I'm going to rip you open and find all your little secrets. 
I'm going to know all of your soul, and you will enjoy the agony. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because usually he can, you know, mm -hmm. get in people's dreams and know what's going on. The dread wolf caught the scent of his little holla and moved swiftly through... God, in the sentence I changed tense. <laughs> and moved swiftly through the fade into her dream. A castle made of stone, but not crystals or roots or branches. Remember elves used to make their stuff out of, like, trees and shit and crystals. They had these trees that would grow and crystals would grow out of them and that would be their cities. Mm -hmm. So this is foreign to him. Just cut st just stone cut into pieces and placed back together again. So strange. So I picture, like, you writing this just so furiously that it's, like, tenses are going everywhere, like... Yeah, I know, I need to get to the sex. Yeah. And then when we get to the sex, the grammar's so bad. <laughs> okay, but, like, but I was always like, but I need to have it have it make sense in terms of lore. <laughs> References, seven pabs open, what happened? Okay, yeah, okay, they were made of crystal? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to make sense in terms of lore. Was she a servant here before her freedom? Maybe this was her... Maybe this is where she toils, recreating her servitude. Not an unusual dream to be trapped forever in what you hate. I might find her in the kitchens bent over a table, covered in flour. Mm. Or on the floor somewhere scrubbing away. What a delightful sight that would be. A circular room covered in paintings filled with tomes. He rather liked the paintings. They seemed to tell a story. Those are his paintings. Yeah. He walked on through a door into a half... Half... Hall... Blech, into a hall filled with the most amazing creatures. There were some rather short things that seemed to be sturdily built. He found them to be interesting to look at. Outnumbering those fa fascinations were what appeared to be large elves with incredibly small ears and eyes. Because they had never seen humans or anything like that. Right, like that. okay. There's, not, there's something not quite right about how they look. They move differently as well. It is so close to normal, but it isn't. I do not like it. I do not like those things. Because, <laughs> like, imagine... Shemlins. Like, how, like, you know, they would be, like, creepy looking yeah. if you had never seen them before. Mm -hmm. There were a few elven among the crowd, but not many. When he looked to the back of the hall, he saw a smell, small elf sitting on a grand throne. Is that a dragon skull? A fascinating choice. The little elf gave a command to one of the creatures he found so unnerving, and it bowed and obeyed. The little elf was his little holla. He found this revelation amusing. He turned her, she turned her head and, at, and looked at him as if she had been expecting him. What an adorable little fantasy she, had ma she has made. Pride, she called out, and moved her hand to call him over, as if she had done this many times to many people. She had an air of command, and Fenharel was starting to wonder if his calculated assumptions were wrong. This was a re this was a revelation that both angered and intrigued him at the same time. He moved slowly up to the throne and admired her body sitting there with all the confidence and intimidation of a queen. I should grab her by the ankles and drag her to the floor. Pull, pull her off that ridiculous fantasy she's made. Her robes are rather pleasing as they cling to her body. Those gems encircling her thighs are rather nice. I wonder what gibberish she will shout when I rip them off her with my teeth. Mmm, she'll <laughs> worship <teeth>. me. <laughs> she'll worship me once I'm done, as ones like her should. Wow. He made to grasp one of her ankles, but found that something was preventing him from touching her no matter how hard he pushed his hand towards her. A crooked grin spread across her face as she uttered a command to him that he did not understand. Her smile turned to an, ang an angry frown as he she uttered it again, and again he did not understand. The little queen grabbed the dreadwolf's furs and pulled him down so hard to his knees, so hard that his knees hit the ground in front of her throne. Something's not right. She shouldn't be able to do this, not to me. I am the master of the beyond. She's just a liberated slave. All right, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, put on your seatbelts. Buckle them up. Tighten them up. All right, I can see like get a ready for get words. ready for warp drive. Close your eyes. Don't want to get you don't want to get no, spoiled. No, I don't want to close my eyes. Then I just envision it. You don't want to envision my smut. <laughs> that would be reading it to me. Probably not. Okay, go. At, okay, I gotta do this without like 
looking at me. Without, like, stopping or anything. Okay. As the dread wolf leered at his infuriating mystery, a smile appeared against her lips. She leaned towards his face, and he couldn't help but anticipate another kiss. But instead, she caressed his ears and neck. The teasing angered him, and he lunged on top of her, but he, she quickly leaned back in her chair. His hands tried to claw her clothes away, but again he found he could not touch. Something pushed his hands and body back when he tried. It was infuriating, infuriating to him. Okay. <sighs> And the dread wolf spoke. When I figure out what magic this is, I'm going to pull you apart and make you beg for forgiveness. I'm going to tear you into, tear into you and pull out, out your secrets to make them mine. Instead of showing fear on her face, she simply smiled wider than ever. It was so infuriating, and yet he could feel his cock go hard for her. <laughs> to make this more torturous, she unbuttoned her blouse to expose her breasts and torso. Unashamed, she moved one slender finger against Nipple to make it stiffen as she let out a sigh. She moved her other hand slowly down her belly to unlace her bre breeches. Graceful and swift, the clothing fell to the ground and she laid naked on her throne under him. <laughs> Be ready? You wanted this! <laughs> she looked down at her. By the way, uh, if you guys want to leave a tip, that's great. <laughs> A tip for this. For this dramatic reading. Uh, if you want to support us on GameWisp, GameWisp.com slash Geek Remix. Thank you. <laughs> because this is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> um, he looked down at her, hungry as ever. He felt like sal a salivating animal as he growled, I will chase you and hunt you every night, pull you down with my teeth and feast on your body as you scream for more. She made him watch as her fingers made their way between her thighs. They moved between her lower lips and circled around her clit, making her shudder and gasp. Soon her hips were moving in an oh-so-fascinating and ryth rhythmic way. He wanted her to do that on him, for him, forever. For all his threats, she never shied away. She never looked away from his eyes. It was almost intimidating. I'm going to rip your throat and claim your body. You're going, she removed her hand from her cunt and shoved her fingers in his mouth as he tried to <laughs> roar at her. Her sweet, earthy taste flooded his mouth and he could not, and he could do nothing but suck the flavor off her hand. <laughs> See? <laughs> I told you! <laughs> I, it's getting worse. Good. Before he could think, he had his mouth on her cunt for more. <laughs> He could not stop in his hunger for her as he kneeled in front of her throne. <laughs> Stacy has her face covered. It's too much. Oh, boy. <laughs> Am I blushing? Yes. <laughs> Licking, sucking, eating, devouring her and her infinite power over him. His hand craved to reach and touch and rip and hold, but he couldn't. Just his mouth to kiss and ravage and only there, nowhere else. His cock ached for attention as he found that he could not even touch himself. And all his rage and frustration rolled back over into his insatiable hunger to eat her. Great. <laughs> he heard her moans and gasps as she rocked her hips into his mouth. He felt her small, powerful hands grab his long dreads to push and pull him back and forth. He let out a long, deep growl as his lips sucked to her clit. <laughs> I do not, like, I don't remember writing this, so it's, like, new to me. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and see if I can dig up some of the stuff that I've written. It would just be a nightmare. <laughs> my pride, my heart, I love you, she screamed as her climate poured over her and into his mouth. She <laughs> shuddered and relaxed oh so confidently as he removed his mouth to look her over in her glory. For a moment, as she gasped for air, he could touch her. He felt victory and knew he had her in her weakness. But then, wake up, she breathed with an evil grin. Fen Harrell was lying on his side on the forest floor. He saw the little wolf elf woman still asleep with a gentle smile on her face. She looked so peaceful in her slumber, so sure of her victory. I'm going to figure out your mystery and consume it. I will know you and all that you are and ever will be. <laughs> Comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that.
that you respond to all the comments and you're like, oh yes, it's happening. There will be more. <laughs> okay, this is so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there were a couple typos here and there that distracted me, but overall, I liked it. Okay, are you ready for the next one? So is this the last chapter? I don't. I don't think. Uh, chapter five. Yeah. Oh, no, it paid. said five of question mark. Yeah, I but, like, that means I, that's all there is. No, it means chapter five of question mark. Is there a next one? Hold on. Nope, nope this, that's is all, this, okay. is this, this is it. Okay, this is it. This is the end. All right. Because I never finished it. All right. <sighs> that was certainly some justice for all his misdeeds. I won't make him suffer much longer. <sighs> but why not? Wait, what is the thing? There's truth. <laughs> <laughs> also sex. <laughs> It's summary. <laughs> the truth starts to unravel. Also sex. Also sex. Just to like, you know. Just so you know, this is... This is where the penetration happens. <laughs> Lavella La- 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 laid with her eyes closed, revel- reliving the, ex- the events that just played out in the fade. Oh, how sweet it was to see him so frustrated. She was looking forward to the passion he was about to finally unleash on her. She heard him crawl on top of her and felt him move his thighs, his thigh between her legs. As she felt his hot breath on her neck, she opened her eyes with a devious smile and, a look, and looked at his face. You look so stupid with that skull on your head. Take it off. And Lavellan pulled it off his head and threw it aside. Then gazed back at him. Something doesn't look right. His mouth pushed onto hers and her doubts were erased for a moment as he ground his hips into her. She could feel how hard he was against her, and he started to grab at her clothes, trying to pull them off. He just wasn't, he just wanted to feel him, she just wanted to feel him inside her, pushing into her, arms and mouth all around her, but something didn't seem right. She pushed his body back with her hand. Why does he look different? He looks the same, maybe. Softer features? Her eyes drifted, drifted, drifted over his forehead. He has no scar. She picked up a rock to her left <laughs> and slammed it into his head, making him fall to the side of her as he clutched his head. Fear and guilt gripped her, and she jumped up to her feet and ran as fast as she could. That wasn't Solus who was... That wasn't Solus who, who was he? Who was he? What is happening? But he was. I know he was. But he was the same... He was the same in the Fade. I can always tell who people are in the Fade, and that was Solus still running. She felt his eyes burning into her back and his footsteps getting closer. I went through time with the amulet. I didn't go forward. I went back. But how far? Solus was, what, 40? I shouldn't have hit him. He looks so angry. I don't know who Solus used to be when he was younger. He's like, what, 40 years old? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lavellan La- La- slowed her pace down and finally stopped. Turning around, she was expecting him to be right there, but he wasn't. She didn't see him anywhere. A whispered prayer came out came out of her gods please guide me to the truth this is a little do sex coming up literally um a just a, a do sex like a where interference just like a macguffin like a just something stupid to make the plot go forward right okay and suddenly a hand flickered a hand flickered fl- flicked her between her eyes a, suddenly a hand flicked her between her eyes quite hard gasping at her Grasping at her face, she exclaimed, Ah, what was that? Your deal, replied the deep voice. Standing in front of her was an elf with black hair that fell to his waist. Waist? Heavy. To his waist. Oh, his poop. His trash. To his poop. (laughs) Heavy looted, he blinked at her as he seemed to wait for a response. A deal, she replied. You just hit me on the head. Who are you? Speaking slowly in an even tone, the elf said, you should know. You came into my realm and asked for my deal. Now pay my price. Knowledge for knowledge. Secrets for secrets. Lavellan, not wanting to interact with this insane man anymore, said, Fine, I'll pay. What's your price? Price is paid, he said, and then pointed back to where she ran from. Return and find your way. That was, um, I forget his name. The god of, like, knowing shit. And so he gave her the elven language. Oh. And he took her language but she still has it like he just learned her language mm-hmm. so that was just like eh. knowledge for knowledge yeah <laughs> so they he got all the all the language knowledge from her and he got she got all the language knowledge from him for elvish 
So now she can speak in Elvish. Mm-hmm. Lavelle felt like she was wa- she like she walked a much further distance than she actually ran, but eventually start she started to feel a pressure on her ears and saw the air move a little. It felt like an like ancient magic, but much stronger, fresher. Eventually she saw Solus in the distance, or who she assumed was a younger Solus. He was just standing over the, there next to a tree. She jogged to him and closed the distance and saw that she had cut his face and blood was smeared all over it. <laughs> Intense guilt hit her gut. But she was still a little satisfied because she got to smash him and in it, the face. And it's kind of hot because the blood's like all over his face and he's like, just like... smeared there. Yeah, it's kind of like sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Like a pirate. Yeah, he's just like sitting there. He didn't even bother to wipe it off. He's just like let it. Oh no, he just he it should hmm trickle. Or, yeah, it's like, like smear all, it it's with... just like all like just like whatever you imagine to be a hot way for blood to be all over someone's face. Yeah, that's it. See, I imagine it with like you know like the hand smear. Yeah, in it. Whatever you want. Whatever I want. It whatever to, you want it to be. Right. Yeah, it's literally like I. It's vague enough. It's fan fiction. It's fan fiction. It's whatever you want it to be. Lavelle started to speak. I'm sorry I hit you. It was wrong of me. I just, I was just confused and thought you were someone else. But listen, this is going to take a while to explain. You're an incredibly insolent little slave girl and have caused me more frustrations than you could possibly be worth. He cut in as he licked a dribble of blood off the corner of his lip. I am not a slave, she screamed. Rage coursed through her. All of the things he went... Of all the things one could say to her, a Dalish elf, a Dalish keeper, a slave, how dare he? Before she could think, she used her mark to push him to the ground. She was so angry and frustrated, all she could do was get on top of him and start screaming. A thousand years of slavery and a thousand more of hiding. We fought tooth and nail for freedom and heritage. And it was you, always you, saying it was all lost already. She started to dig her nails into his bare chest and he was breathing hard. She noticed a (laughs) smile spreading across his face. Lavellan put her face up to his, grabbed his dreads. Don't you dare. Don't you dare smile at me. (laughs) He bit into... I don't remember writing this. (sighs) Now I'm starting to remember, actually. He bit into his lip and replied, Yes, I I apologize, little mistress. You are no slave. You are much more than that. His eyes were bright and attentive, and his breath was starting to shake. He likes it. Something about the way he said it made her reach down and start to unlace his pants. With one of her hands still... Oh, no. I just remembered what I wrote. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, God. This is going to be... Okay. (sighs) Okay. Don't check my temperature! Checking the sweat watch. With one of her hands still pulling his dread, she looked down the other and... She she took took the other and grasped his cock. Yes. This is definitely... Oh, my God! (laughs) Yes, this is definitely still Solus. He can be as young or as old as possible. I know this part of him. She recognizes him by cock touch? She recognized his dick. Wow. Duh. You can't change that, okay? Yeah. Dick prints. Dick print. (laughs) Solus let out a long, obscene moan as her firm grip went from the base of his cock to the tip. He twitched in her hands and she could... could, and she could how aroused. <laughs> and she could how aroused he was. She released her grip on him and started to remove her clothes. Don't move. just when you get into it, there's just the grammar just falls <laughs> <completely laughs> apart. I was writing at the speed of lightning. <laughs> Don't move. Don't touch me. Just lay there. She ordered, and he did so, star- staring wide-eyed and attentive as she pulled her clothes off deftly. Climbing back on top of him, she oh, pulled no. his furs off his chest to the side and admired the sight. Lean muscles all the way down to his abdomen, leading down to his pulsing and twitching dick. <laughs> Should I say his cock? Dick. Dick. <laughs> there was blood still all over his face, but she looked, but she liked the look, despite feeling a twinge of guilt for causing it. A deep cut in the middle of his forehead. You know, if this was like an actual, like, you know, romance book, they would probably say, like, throbbing member or oh, something. Oh, yeah. Or his sex. Nah, I like saying no, dick. 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 That's there. His cock. His cock. I'm sure that's what they, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's sex. Ro- it's romantic sounding. And also this sex. This isn't, this isn't, like, I'm not, this is romantic but dirty. Okay? Also sex. Also sex. 
I'll make it better. Reaching down, she grabbed his cock and moved it up to her cunt as she bent over him to kiss his mouth. It was a greedy and sloppy kiss, and she moved her mouth up his cheek onto his forehead, half kissing him, half licking. She took the tip of it of him and moved it around her clit, making her moan into the kisses she was dragging across his face. When she felt how wet, when he felt how wet she was, he tried to thrust and grab her hips. No, she growled into her into his ear. With her free hand, she twisted the tip of his pointed ear, and he half yelped, half groaned. Obediently, he did not touch her. Swirling the tip of his manhood, yeah, yeah, I said yeah, manhood. manhood. There you Swirling go. the tip of his manhood around her clit, she made him watch as her breath came became short. Shamelessly, she used him to come while giving him the minimal amount of pleasure. <laughs> she could you she could see the frustration in his face and the rage inside her purred. <laughs> she's so mad at him. She's punishing him. She's punishing him for being bad. Yeah, this makes sense to me. <laughs> this is Finally. Learning tactics for later. So if you guys ever make me mad, this is how I punish you. <laughs> Finally, she placed him at her opening. And, yeah, opening. I, I said opening. Yep. I didn't say cunt. Cunt? I only use cunt in sex terms. At her clit. Hey, I didn't want to be one of those people who were like, this is her center. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to say clit. Yeah. Like no. a normal person. <laughs> I, yeah. Finally, she placed him at her opening and looked into his eyes. She slowly lowered herself on him and could feel him stretching her. It felt so good she couldn't help but let out a long groaning curse. Dreadwolf, take me, Lavellan let out in a long, throaty moan. Yes, he said. And he was on top of her, oh, thrusting no. into her, grabbing all over her. His mouth was all over her neck with kisses and bites. It felt like being devoured into ecstasy, each thrust desperate for more, to be deeper, closer. His hands touched and probed and crushed on her breasts, belly, thighs, ass, and clit. <laughs> Like ass he could clit. ass and clit. Like he couldn't decide where he wanted to be, but he just wanted more to feel more, taste more, have more. He could feel her climax swelling inside her. Do it now, she panted and screamed. Come with me, in me, do it now. Now <laughs> Oh my god. She grabbed his head and made him look into her eyes, and she knew that she knew him. What? She grabbed his head and made him look into her eyes, and she knew that she knew him. And she like, knew that she knew him. Yeah, okay, like, but okay. But this, this next sentence. She felt him thrust harder and jerkier. <laughs> jerkier. Yeah, like, ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah, with that, like, <laughs> ugh, 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 like that. <laughs> she could feel him unleashing inside her, and it pushed her over the edge. They both cried out in the same moment, sharing it together. And that's, that's, that's And just, that's it. That's it. So the storyline's going to be... Dorian and the rest of the gang come to like rescue the gang. Him. The rest of the gang, they all pop out of um, you know, a wormhole, and Dorian goes, "I did it! I'm amazing!" And of he's, course. And then like uh, you know, but before that, they like fall in love and talk and blah 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 blah. And um, Dorian explains, "Don't check my head." <laughs> Dorian explains, "Hey," and like everybody pretty much explains, like, "Hey, like you can't have this can't." Like, he can't remember this. Like, if he remembers this, it's going to change everything. It's going to yeah. get all fucked up. So, like, they talk, and she agrees. Cole is there and takes Solus's memories and puts them inside her, of her. And then they leave. And then, like, after she leaves, he doesn't remember anything that happens, but he's, like, different. And he, like, suddenly is super against slavery. Like, he looks at a slave woman and, like... Suddenly, it seems so wrong. Oh. It seems so wrong, and that, like, is the catalyst to make him go, like, wait, like, I don't want this. And yeah. he rebels, and he fights against the gods. And thousands of years later, he's trying to bring back the glory of the old ways, as he does. And he sees her before the, the, the explosion, and he's, like, drawn to her. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, that, and, like, he's, he, just something about her is just, like, he... He's in love with her, but he doesn't remember her, and she hasn't met him yet. And then he makes her fall in love with him, and he teaches her all the things that make him turned on. And then he disappears, and she goes to the past, makes him fall in love with her, and then what was going to happen was like... I'm sorry, I I lost you a little bit on the time changes. Okay, so 
I got to the part where he thinks slavery is wrong, and okay. then he rebels against the gods, and then... And then all the stuff happens, because she's the catalyst for the reason why there was a god war. Yes. So it's basically like, she'd been back in time, but that was part of time in the first place. Yeah, kind of yeah. That's, so, how, that's how any good time travel story is written, yep, so very yep. good job. Thank you. Then so, that's why she bashes him on the forehead with a rock. Yeah, and it? that's why he has the scar. Mm-hmm. He'll always have the scar. She's the one who gave him the scar on his forehead. Yeah. That's why he never healed it. I love that you made it make so much sense. <laughs> I really like that. (laughs) So then, you know, the war happens, he goes to sleep, blah, 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 blah. He wakes up, and he wants to bring things back to the way they used to be. But it's more that he wants to have that feeling again, but he doesn't know where that feeling came from. Mm -hmm. And he spends time with her, and you know when he's, like, almost is about to give up on changing the world? Yeah. And he's, like, because he's getting that feeling from her, but he doesn't think it's from her, so he breaks up with her. Mm Mm-hmm. And then after she comes back from her time traveling thing, she knows she's like, oh my god, like I know all the stuff. Like he's he's like a guy, you know. Like she knows all the things, yep. but she has to tell him and give him back his memories because if he, she does, because she had to take him away. So then before Trespasser happened, I knew that he was gonna do whatever the fuck he was be gonna. a dick. He was gonna be a dick and try to destroy the world. Yeah, I was like, okay, he's gonna try to destroy the world. So I was like, the end of the story was they were going to meet at the door to him destroying the world, and she was going to give him back their memory, his memories, and then they would still, then they would finally be on the same level. And he was like, and he would realize the reason why he wanted to go back to the that way is because he wanted to go back to feeling the way she made him feel, but he didn't remember it was her. So it was all, it's all for love. It was all just a huge loop. Yeah. But it was a good thing that all these wars happened because it stopped slavery and created Thetis and all this stuff. So she's the reason why Thetis exists. Mmm. <laughs> I love it how it like it starts out with her like in her infinite power, and then like the moral of the story is like in her infinite power she created Thetis and romance she's, to God. Yeah, she's the reason why Fenharel rebelled and split the world in two. She's why, and he had no idea it was her all along. It was him just chasing her So through oceans of time. Yeah. Again, I can totally, it's like, it's. I feel like I'm seeing your psyche with the plot of this fanfiction. <laughs> he must be punished. <laughs> but I still want to fuck him. I'm so mad. <laughs> and, but the whole, like, and I'm the reason for everything. Yeah, she's the reason for everything because she's the one who made a god fall in love with her but made him forget. And so his it, his chase through oceans of time to find her is the reason why everything has happened through all of time. It's kind of romantic, though. Yeah. Kind of cute. Like, I'm the most important person who has ever existed. I'm the reason why things exist. It's a little twilight <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it's better than Twilight. It is better than Twilight. It's true. Anyway, that was... um. My smuttier than Twilight. Smuttier than Twilight. Yeah, Everyone's like, sure. you gotta finish it, so maybe, maybe and I will. And then we can do another dramatic reading. <sighs> but just don't write it with that in mind. Write it. Write it, write it, like, seriously. Keep it real. Write it like you would write it, you know, include ass, clit, dick. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, because, like, you, whenever I'm, like, listening and they're, like, his throbbing center, I'm like, say it! Yeah. His semen on her face. I feel like it depends, like, some of them are like that. Um, It just depends on how, like, how smutty and dirty the author wants to be. Yeah. Some of them are supposed to be, like, romance and, like, it has the smut, but they try and keep it, like, still kind of romantic. Mm -hmm. And other ones are like, no, he fucked the shit out of her. You know? (laughs) I was, I was trying to keep a balance of both. I was like, well, this has to be, uh, you know, correct in terms of the lore. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you took us away to explain some things. <laughs> oh, everyone, re- please read this lore <laughs> right now <laughs> so you can understand the context. The lady is the goddess of the hunt and drool. She has golden armor. She once went into the void and turned her insane. Just for context. <laughs> like, Just for context. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>